जय राधा माधव जय कुंज Yeah. 
जय गोपि जन बल्लभ जय गिरीवर धरी जय गिरीवर धरी प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवाषादि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिर गोवर्धन की ब्रज भूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की गंगा माई जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की श्रीला प्रभुपा ट्रांसनेटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की निताई गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असेंबल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असेंबल डिवोटिस All glories to assemble devotees. All glories, all glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Oh. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिमिरंध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर्ओन्मील ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम 
नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर नाइनटीन चैप्टर एंड टाइटल द अपियरेंस ऑफ सुखदेव गोस्वामी टेक्स्ट नाइन अत्रेर्वशिष्ठ बना शरद्वान अरेष्ट ने मे भृगुरांगिर पराशरो गाधि सुथोथराम उतथ्य इंद्र प्रमदेदाधौ अत्रेर्वशिष्ठ चवन शरद्वान अरेष्ट ने मे भृगुरांगिर पराशरो गाधि सुतोथराम उतथ्य इंद्र प्रमदेधमवाह अत्रेर्वशिष्ठ चवन शरद्वान अरेष्ट ने मेर भृगुरांगिर पराशरो गाधि सुतोथराम उतथ्य इंद्र प्रमदेदमवाह
माता जी All names of the different saintly personalities who arrived there from different parts of the universe. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Shila A. C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. From different parts of the universe, there arrived great sages like Atri, Chavana, Sharadvan, Arishtanemi, Bhrigu, Vasishta, Parashara, Vishwamitra, Angira, Parashurama, Utathya, Indra Pramada, Idmavahu, Medatithi, Devala, Arishtashena, Bharadvaja, Gautama, Pippalada, Maitreya, Aurva, Kavasha, Kumbhayoni, Dvaipayana, and the great personality Narada. Purport. Chavana, a great sage and one of the sons of Bhrigu Muni. He was born prematurely when his pregnant mother was kidnapped. Chavana is one of the six sons of his father. Bhrigu, when Brahmaji was performing a great sacrifice on behalf of Varuna. Maharshi Bhrigu was born from the sacrificial fire. He was a great sage and his very dear wife was Puloma. He would travel in space like Duruvasa, Narada and others. And he used to visit all the planets of the universe. Before the battle of Kurukshetra, he tried to stop the battle. Sometimes he instructed Bharadwaj Muni about astronomical evolution and he is the author of the great Bhrigu Samhita, the great astrological calculation. He explained how air, fire, water and earth are generated from ether. He explained how the air in the stomach works and regulates the intestines. As a great philosopher, he logically established the eternity of the living entity, Mahabharata. He was also a great anthropologist, and the theory of evolution was long ago explained by him. He was a scientific propounder of the four divisions and orders of the human society, known as the Varnashrama Institution. He converted the Kshatriya king Vitahavya into a Brahmana. Vasishtha Sri Srimad Bhagavatam 196. Parashara, he is the grandson of Vasishtha Muni and father of Vyasadeva. He is the son of Maharshi Shakti and his mother's name was Adrishyati. He was in the womb of his mother when she was only 12 years old and from within the womb of his mother he learned the Vedas. His father was killed by a demon, Kalmashapada, and to avenge this he wanted to annihilate the whole world. He was restrained however by his grandfather Vasishtha. He then performed a Rakshasa killing Yajna. But Maharshi Pulatsya restrained him. He begot Vyasadeva, being attracted by Satyavati, who was to become the wife of Maharaj Shantanu. By the blessings of Parashara, Satyavati became fragrant for miles. He was present also during the time of Bhishma's death. He was the spiritual master of Maharaj 
Janaka and a great devotee of Lord Shiva. He is the author of many Vedic scriptures and sociological directions. Gadhi Sutta or Vishwamitra, a great sage of austerity and mystic power. He is famous as Gadhi Sutta because his father was Gadhi. A powerful king of the province of Kanyakubja, part of Uttar Pradesh. Although he was a Kshatriya by birth, he became a Brahmana in the very same body by the power of his spiritual achievements. He picked a quarrel with Vasishta Muni when he was a Kshatriya king and performed a great sacrifice in cooperation with Maganga Muni and thus was able to vanquish the sons of Vasishtha. He became a great yogi and yet he failed to check his senses and thus was obliged to become the father of Shakuntala, the beauty queen of world history. Once, when he was a Kshatriya king, he visited the hermitage of Vasishtha Muni and he was given a royal reception. Vishwamitra wanted from Vasishtha a cow named Nandini and the Muni refused to deliver it. Vishwamitra stole the cow and thus there was a quarrel between the sage and the king. Vishwamitra was defeated by the spiritual strength of Vasishtha and thus the king decided to become a Brahmana. Before becoming a Brahmana, he underwent severe austerity on the bank of the Kaushika. He was also one who tried to stop the Kurukshetra war. Angira is one of the six mental sons of Brahma and the father of Brahaspati, the great learned priest of the demigods in the heavenly planets. He was born of the semen of Brahmaji, given to a cinder of fire. Utathya and Samavarta are his sons. It is said that he is still performing austerity and chanting the holy name of the Lord at a place known as Alokananda on the banks of the Ganges. Parashurama, see Srimad Bhagavatam 1. 9.6 Utathya, one of the three sons of Maharishi Angira. He was the spiritual master of Maharaj Mandhata. He married Bhadra, daughter of Soma Moon. Varuna kidnapped his wife Bhadra and to retaliate the offense of the god of water, he drank all the water of the world. From Medha Dhiti Devala Bharadwaja Gautama Maitreya will be taken up in the next class. So this particular chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the 19th chapter of the first canto, is the turning point where Maharaj Parikshit, after being cursed by Shringi, is formulating his response. As all of us know, to any circumstance and situation, there could be three responses. First is a political response, where we fight it out and get back. Second is an emotional response where we are affected by the situation and succumb to it emotionally, become depressed, distressed, hopeless. And third is the devotional response where we see the situation 
in its truth as to where it is originating and see that it is originating in the will of the Lord. And then the devotional response consists of understanding that as a practicing devotee, I cannot understand the will of Krishna. I can only submit to the will of Krishna. And therefore, the Vedic literatures describe two levels of Vedic instructions. Vyavaharika Satta, which is basically the duties which we perform in our day-to-day -day activities the moral codes of responsibility and conduct which we have. And the second is Paramarthika Satta, which is understanding the spiritual essence behind everything. Maharaj Parikshit is used as an example for all of us to understand that we will all experience certain situations in life for which there will be no material intellectual counteraction possible. At that point, we need to understand the nature of this world is suffering. So Parikshit Maharaj is experiencing this situation of suffering, where at the peak of youth, he has been cursed to die in seven days and seven nights. To lose a phone is painful. To lose good health is painful. To lose a relationship is painful. To lose one's property is painful. But the most painful is to lose one's body itself. So the whole experience of the body being snatched away from the soul is the most painful experience anyone can have. And Maharaj Parikshit is faced with that situation where he is cursed by Shringi to die in seven days and seven nights. So the question arises, was Maharaj Parikshit a sinful person or a pious person? He was not just pious, he was extremely pious. He was the grandson of Arjuna. And not only that, he had such good credits that Maharaj Parikshit saw Krishna in the womb of his mother. And in the first canto, during the birth of Maharaj Parikshit episode, the verse describes Angushtam matramamalam spurat purata maulinam apivya darshanam shyamam Krishna appeared in the form of the size of a thumb, wearing yellowish clothes which were glowing like lightning. Krishna's form was blackish, attractive. And when Parikshit Maharaj saw that bewitching beauty of Krishna, he was overwhelmed with emotion. He lost his heart to that person and when he came out of the womb of his mother, he spent his entire life searching for that personality who protected him in his mother's womb. And because Krishna protected him in his mother's womb, one of the names given to Maharaj Parikshit is Vishnu Rat, one who is protected by Vishnu. Tasmat namna Vishnu rata iti loke bhavishyati. In this world, he became famous as one who is protected by Vishnu. And therefore, Maharaj Parikshit was not ordinary. He became a Mahabhagavat. Jai Shishri Radha Gopinaji ki. Na sandeho Mahabhaga. Mahabhagavato Mahan. He is described as Mahabhagavat and Mahabhagyashali. So naturally, if someone has seen Krishna in the womb of his mother, 
you would ex expect that Krishna would protect that person even in future. And just for putting a dead snake around a rishi's neck, did that merit penalty by death? It seems unjust. And therefore, amongst the different emotions which are provoked within the conditioned soul's heart, one of the strongest emotions of anger is provoked within us when we perceive injustice. When a punishment is given not commensurate with the gravity of the act. So therefore, for such a great personality as Parikshit was the grandson of the Pandavas who actually saw Krishna in the womb of his mother, was protected by Krishna just for putting a dead snake around a rishi's neck, he is subjected to the pronouncement of death. So this is the point at which the Srimad Bhagavatam begins. Where the Srimad Bhagavatam is revealing that all of us have to go through one thing in common in life, which is change. Change which is imposed upon us against our will at the least expected moment. And at that point, we cannot protest. All we can do is follow in the footsteps of Maharaj Parikshit and learn the devotional response. So therefore, the question arises that majority of the people come to temple expecting relief from suffering. Majority of the people come for darshan of the Lord thinking that if the Lord glances upon me, I will become free from suffering. So temple is seen as the insurance agency against suffering. And then we hear about someone who saw Krishna in the womb of the mother and then at the peak of youth, he is subject to death against his will. Then one may question, is it worth coming to the temple and taking darshan of Krishna? Krishna looks very sweet. He seems to be looking very innocent playing on the flute but seems like he is the supreme personality of unpredictability and uncertainty. And therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is bringing upon this topic. What is the topic? That the purpose of human form of life is not to minimize suffering and not to minimize, not to maximize prosperity. To increase our prosperity and to minimize our adversity is not the purpose of human life. Parikshit is going through the worst adversity one can expect. So his response at this moment of adversity is, let me take shelter of the association of devotees from across the universe so that I can absorb my mind in only two questions. How to serve Krishna and how to please Krishna. And therefore, he says, Tasyaiva meghasya paravaresho Vyasakta chittasya griheshva bhikshnam Nirveda Molo and Dvijashapa Rupo Yatra Prasakto Bhayamashudhatte. Parikshit says, I welcome this curse which has been pronounced upon me. 
because of this curse i can now withdraw myself from material attachments nirveda mulo dvija shaparupo this curse which has come through the brahmana boy shringi becomes the instrument for uprooting my attachments and therefore maharaj parikshit is demonstrating how we should respond to suffering in this world so i'll just share a few points on suffering as described in our shastras especially the shrimad bhagavatam the gita and the chaitanya charitamrita and the first point is that the nature of this world is designed for suffering brahma ji when he is creating the universe after performing his tapasya when he sees lord krishna he chants the brahma samhita govinda madhi purusham tam aham bhajami after that he folds his hands and requests the lord please give me seva and the lord gives him the service that my dear brahma ji your first service is to create a material world which will be filled with suffering in every atom and it should be filled with suffering in every space between every atom <laughs> design pure unalloyed suffering and so brahma ji when he hears this he is bewildered because when devotees do seva they want to do something which is pleasing to others which is not traumatizing to others brahma ji being a pure vaishnav he is given a task to create a mechanism for pure trauma and so he starts praying to the lord ಶೀತೋಷ್ಣವಾತವರ tridhatubir ima a body comprising of kapha vata and pitta which will hardly ever be in balance mostly in imbalance tridhatubir sheet ushna vata varshair heat cold rain snow they should be in suffering externally like anything and then if externally things become comfortable right just like we have created <laughs> air conditioning right after all the construction radhanath swami said we should make temple ac i told him if you make temple ac people will bring their pillow to sleep during the lecture but he said no it should be comfortable so okay externally comfortable brahma ji says kama agni na achyut rusha chasa durbharena and he says internally they should be bombarded with lust and when they cannot control their lust achyut rusha and prabhupada translates achyuta rusha as in de fatigable anger which means anger which will never experience fatigue right when you do nirjala ekadashi your bodily strength will go down but anger will still be there you cannot control that 
Sampashyato Brahma Ji is saying by seeing that Mana Urukrama Siddhate me, my heart is becoming filled with great pain, my dear Lord. Because Vaishnava want to please, they don't want to displease, right? When you do seva, you want to do some seva in a way that you ask the devotees, how was the seva? And they say, may you be blessed. Then you feel alright. Seva was safal. Right? Like we were in the Yatra in 2008, Prindavan and uh, after that, that was the first time we started cooking. After two, three days of cooking, some devotees came to me and started saying, you should allow us to also cook. I said, Baba, this is for three, four thousand people. Have you experienced cooking for so many people? So, no, no, I have, we have cooked for 100, 200, no problem. Then what about this two, three thousand? Hare, you have to give us chance, Baba. Unless you give chance, how you will be em empowering us? So I said, okay, take the chance. So they made the poha. It turned out to be very hard. <laughs> Just by tasting that, I realized it will be a hard day today for me. <laughs> so I disappeared from the kitchen during the breakfast serving. And then I, after the lunch, I was in, sitting in the kitchen. One devotee entered. And he was searching for me. <laughs> and he said, Are what you fed in the morning? Poha was so hard. That toot gaya. <laughs> I said, that was not poha, that was cornflakes. <laughs> you are supposed to mix with the herbal tea. He got totally bewildered. He looked at me and said, Hey, you never told me that. I said, you never asked me that. <laughs> so he got so confused, I just ran away from there. And then, you know, full day I was feeling very bad that, oh, we didn't make something which pleased the devotees. It caused pain to the devotees. So you don't like to give pain. You like to give pleasure. So just see, the first devotee in the universe was given the first seva of creating a whole universe embedded with pain. So Brahmaji is praying to the Lord, my heart is overwhelmed with compassion for these souls. So therefore along with the pain, Brahmaji is also having his sampradaya, known as Brahma Sampradaya, which gives the knowledge which will indemnify and help the soul overcome and tolerate this pain and go to the land beyond pain, which is the spiritual world. Aham mamaso patiresha me suto brajeshwarasya kilabitta pasati gopyascha gopya sahagodhanascha me samayayayan kumati samemati. When Yashoda Mai sees Krishna's, within Krishna's mouth, the entire Brahmand. She is bewildered and she is saying, I was thinking this is my son, but looks like I have no control over what situation he goes through. What is the purpose of this entire creation and what's this suffering all about? And so, in that particular purport, Srila Prabhupada mentions that when a devotee goes through suffering, he should realize that sometimes our human suffering is beyond speculation. It is beyond contemplation. It is beyond meditation. It is beyond the purview of our words and argument. And therefore, in such a situation, what should we do? So this is the second point on suffering that when the suffering is beyond our comprehension and we cannot identify the exact cause of the suffering and why this is happening, Prabhupada says, follow in the footsteps of Yashoda Mai. And what is that? Yashoda Mai said, let me surrender to the cause of all causes. 
अनादिर आदिर गोविंद सर्व कारण कारणम आई कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द इमीडिएट कारण बट आई नो वन थिंग ही इज सर्व कारण कारणम सेकेंड वन शुड देन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ थिंग्स आर इनकनसीवेबल अचिंत्य देन अचिंत्य खलवे भावा नताम तर्के न योजयत there are certain situations which will be inconceivable and in such situations all i need to do is offer my obeisances to that supreme who has been the cause of everything tat tenu kampam su samikshamana su sam ikshamana to see beyond the immediate and the instant and see what could be the cause of all causes and therefore when maharaj parikshit is faced with the bull being made to you know suffer at the hands of kali he is repeatedly asking the bull who is the cause of your suffering and maharaj parikshit expects the bull to point to kali who is right there is the cause of my suffering the bull says no न वय क्लेश बीजा जत स्युपुरषर्षभ पुष तम विजानीम वाक्य भेद विमोहिता हि सेज मै डि लॉर्ड ओ परीक्षित महाराज ओ किंग एक्चुअली इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदर द आत्मा इज द कॉज द दैव इज द कॉज द कर्म इज द कॉज the swabhava is the cause different different philosophers have always remained bewildered and therefore a pratarkyat anirdeshyat iti kesha pinishchaya aktran rupam rajarshe vimrishya swamanishaya we cannot understand the exact cause of our suffering through either argumentation imagination explanation or contemplation and therefore prabhupad writes in this shrimad bhagavatam 11722 purport to identify the immediate cause of suffering is not incorrect but it is incomplete due to not recognizing the sanction of the supreme lord it is not incorrect but it is incomplete because you should realize who is sanctioning it and therefore the bhagavatam's conclusion is no one is directly responsible as my benefactor no one is directly responsible as a mischief monger without the sanction of the lord and therefore both benefit and loss is krishna sent and that is the perspective of the shrimad bhagavatam and so shila prabhupad in this purport concludes how to deal with this suffering he says two things first don't be angry with the mischief monger and second tolerate that reversal one devotee when as a student he used to come to the temple he was sharing his experience that when he would stand in the prasadam line he would come to take the prasadam and first he would get the plate and because you know when a student is young and hungry and all so they are quite focused on the prasadam only <laughs> so you know he would get the plate and he said i was i would be so hungry and so obsessed with the prasadam that my eyes would only be on the plate 
I would hardly ever look up to see who is serving. That was only a detail. The focus was on the plate. Rice would fall, okay. Dal, okay. Sabji, okay. And the only time I would look up was when some item would not fall as per my expectation. <laughs> so if he give only one gulab jamun, he wants to look up. <laughs> Who is that? So as long as we are receiving things, people are so absorbed, they don't bother to look up. So now and then, there has to be a little knock. Then you look up from where it is coming. So therefore, you know, Srila Prabhupada explains in one of the purports very beautifully, just suffering by itself is not sufficient to inspire a person in spiritual life. When that suffering is supplemented by satsanga, because you need a place where you can ask question, why oh, I am going through this? You can't go to a police station and ask, who am I? <laughs> They'll say that we don't know, but we'll tell you who we are. <laughs> So you have to ask the question in the right place. And therefore, that is the satsanga of the devotees. When Srila Prabhupada was in Kolkata, he told the devotees, let us go and make life member. And Prabhupada said, the purpose of this life membership program is to provide association and satsanga. And the American disciples were coming to India for the first time in 1970-71. And in India, you know, when people go to anybody's house, there is a tendency to serve prasadam more and more. So this was the first experience for these American young people because they would say, enough. But they would not put their hand over the plate. So they would still put. So they would be bewildered. I thought, I said, no. It took some time to understand the Indian way. So some of them ate so much that after coming back to the temple, one devotee was shouting, Prabhupada, my stomach is aching. Prabhupada said, naturally, you had 25 puris. <laughs> so the devotee got bewildered. He said, how do you know Prabhupada? Prabhupada said, I was counting. Another devotee started laughing. Prabhupada said, you don't laugh, you had 16. <laughs> and then Prabhupada said, the purpose of going and making them members is to give them an opportunity for Brahma Jigyasa. What is spiritual life? And what is the purpose of spiritual life? And therefore, Kaviraj Goswami says, Kuladhi Devata More Madana Mohan Jara Sevak Raghunath Rupasanathan Apart from my family, when I start recognizing that I belong to the family of Krishna, my Kuladev is Madan Mohan and their Sevaks are Rupa and Sanatan. Morkhani Chakshudra Moi Bishayalalas Vaishnavagya Bolekore Eteka Sahas. I'm foolish, I'm ignorant, I'm insignificant, I'm sinful, but I'm dependent on the Vaishnava's mercy. Shri Rupa Raghunatha Charaner Abel Jara Smrite Yesidha Hoy Vanchita Sakal 
And that access to the grace of all the Vaishnava Acharyas is still available to us every moment. And through that grace, we are able to get the strength to tolerate. And that's how Srila Prabhupada established Krishna Consciousness movement all over the world by depending on Krishna. Prabhupada was in Vrindavan. His Brajavasi friend Bhagatji, you know, he was cooking. And Prabhupada said, how long are you taking to cook? Bhagatji said, Prabhupada, I am cooking so many items. It will take time. Prabhupada said, huh? if you give me this opportunity, in one hour, everything will be done. Bhagatji said, it is not possible, uh, Prabhupada, it is not possible. Prabhupada said, come on. Are you challenging me? Let's have a bet. 150 rupees. 150 rupees, I'll be able to finish all this in one hour. Are you ready for this bet? And Bhagatji said, Prabhupada, there is no point having a bet with you. Because if you win, you'll keep the money. If I win, you'll tell me to donate the money. Either way, you know, you know how to do things in a way that ultimately things are on your side. So Srila Prabhupada, he mentioned that when Srila Saraswati Thakur gave him the instruction to go and spread Krishna consciousness, all he did was try to follow that instruction. And that's what Kaviraj Goswami is saying that by following the instructions and by depending on the instructions of the Vaishnavas, automatically the trauma which one may be going through can be tolerated and one gets hope beyond the current range of suffering. So these are the first two points that the design of this world is suffering is embedded and second whether we are able to analyze what is the cause of our suffering immediately or not. All of us accept that Krishna is the cause of all causes, the cause of all suffering to begin with. So to be able to see Krishna's hand within that suffering. Tadatadahameshasya bhaktanam sham abhipsatam Anugraha Manyamana Pratishtam Dishamuttaram When Narad Muni's mother died and he was only five years old. The greatest experience of trauma for a helpless child. But he saw Krishna's hand. And he saw this incident as Bhaktanam Sham Abhipsatam. Krishna who desires the benefit of his devotees. Anugraha Manyamana. He considered this to be Krishna's prasad. Blessings. Pratishtam Dishamuttaram. And he goes towards the north. So to see Krishna as the cause of all causes. Third, we should see that this material world is certified by Krishna as Dukkhalayam, Ashashvatam, because that is how Krishna has created this world. Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadhi, Dukkha, Doshanu, Darshanam. So Vasudev Datta, he prays to Lord Chaitanya. Jivera Dukkha Dekhi Mora, Hrudaya Bidare. Sarva Jivera Papa Prabhu Deha Mora Shire. My dear Lord, my heart is breaking to see the suffering of the conditioned souls. Please give all the suffering upon my head. Let me go to hell for that. When Lord Chaitanya hears this, he says, Tomara Bichitra Nahe Tomi Sakshata Prahalad. 
तोमार ऊपरे कृष्णेर संपूर्ण प्रसाद ओ वासुदेव दत्त इट इज नॉट सरप्राइजिंग दैट यू आर स्पीकिंग विथ सच कंपैशन इन योर हार्ट बिकॉज यू आर नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम प्रहलाद बट यू डोंट हैव टू गो टू हेल्प फॉर दिस बिकॉज कृष्णा हैज द पावर टू डिलीवर ऑल द सोल्स just by the prayer of a vaishnav asamarth no he krishne dhare sarva ba to ma ke va ke ne bhun jai be paap phal don't you think krishna has the power to deliver every soul without you having to go through suffering yes he has all the power but then why all the souls are not being delivered he says the reason for that is the vaishnavas and why the vaishnavas krishna the lord chaitanya says if the vaishnavas pray from the core of their heart to relieve the suffering of the conditioned souls krishna has to listen to them तो मी यार ही तवांचा से होइल बैष्णव बैष्णवेर पाप कृष्ण करे दूर सब कृष्णा हैज टू लिसन टू द बैष्णव प्रेयर एंड देर फॉर श्रील प्रभुपाल राइट्स इन द परपोर्ट दैट फ्रॉम श्रील वासुदेव दत्त वी अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग that one of the greatest responsibilities devotees have is yes this material world is dukkhalayam ashashvatam but the only reason for hope which is there in this world is the devotees have been invested with the power to pray for others and that is compassion and that's the reason we pray for others to deliver others and that vaishnav kripa is the only hope for people in this world there was somebody who was part of a terrorist organization and then he left them he had a fight with them and he left and then he was sitting in a bar he was completely drunk and when he was drunk there was a you know magazine lying in front of him and another drunk person showed him that magazine and told him this is very good one drunk preached by another drunk and he picked up that and that magazine was back to godhead he couldn't figure out you know what was going on because his he was totally drunk and he was in easy journey to other planets <laughs> so he you know brought the book with him and then when he came to his senses the next day he read through he liked it and then he started searching for the devotees and he got connected to the devotees but when he told his background the devotees were very afraid to bring him in but with great difficulty he convinced them and finally he got transformed and then he shared his realization that these books of shila prabhupada and the magazines are so powerful that even when you are in a drunk state <laughs> krishna doesn't leave you and you can actually be impacted so therefore the nature of this world is dukkhalayam ashashvatam another fourth point is both suffering and happiness manifest by karmic results when you get happiness it is a effect of certain karma when you get suffering also it is a effect of some karma but the only thing is when there is suffering it is more painful and so in the first canto narad muni says tasyaiva hetu prayate ta ko vidu 
न लभ्यते यत् भ्रमताम उपर्यध इन ह्यूमन फॉर्म ऑफ लाइफ योर एनर्जी शुड बी इन्वेस्टेड इन सर्चिंग फॉर दैट विच इज नॉट अवेलेबल विद इन ऑल द फोर्टीन प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स वॉट इज दैट भक्ति कृष्णा भक्ति विच इज नॉट अवेलेबल विद इन ऑल द फोर्टीन प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स नीच अधम पामर मोय पामर स्वभाव मोय जी आई ले तो मार की बाहो बे लाभ वेन सनातन गो स्वाम इज इन होपलेस कंडीशन एंड इज कंटेम्पलेटिंग सुइसाइड इज सेज माई डे लॉर्ड आई एम फॉलन आई एम यूजलेस माई नेचर इज अबॉमिनेबल वॉट इज यूज इफ आई सर्वाइव वॉट इज यूज इफ आई लिव एंड लॉर्ड चेतन सेज प्रभु कहे तोमार देह मोर निज धन तुम्हें मोर को आत्मसमर्पण माई डर सनातन यू हैव ऑलरेडी सरेंडर्ड योर बॉडी टू मी दैट बॉडी बिलोंग्स टू मी एंड आई विल यूज योर बॉडी फॉर माय मिशन तोमार शरीर मोर प्रधान साधन हे शरीर साधे मो आमे बहु प्रयोजन एंड देर फॉर यू डू नॉट कंक्लूड वॉट यू विल डू विद दिस बॉडी यू जस्ट बिकम अ निमित्त और एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड अलाउ द लॉर्ड टू यूज ईच वन ऑफ अस इन हिस सर्विस दैट्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट वी बिकम इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द लॉर्ड allow the lord to use us in his service there was a devotee who was doing book distribution he had never done books in the past but by doing regularly he became empowered and he would he was so empowered i mean he was sharing his story that because my intention and desire was simply to please shila prabhu pad krishna would reveal things which i could not fathom also like he would meet somebody and give him a book and shake their hand and said happy birthday and the person would say how did you know it is my birthday today said krishna reveals he got that empowered by just by meeting people he would figure out so he could distribute like hundreds of gitas in like couple of hours so once he was distributing these books in an airport and after 2 hours one well dressed man came to him and said i am the ceo of a company i am observing you for last 2 hours you are giving books and selling books to people who don't want it they have no clue what these books are they have no desire to buy these books but the way you are selling it to them with a smile on your face they are forced to purchase i am looking for vice president marketing in my company here is my card please join me the devotee said do you have bhagavad gita he said no so he first sold him the gita his basics were very clear he sold him the gita and then he said let me think about it he said please you know um, this is my number so after one week the devotee calls him so this guy picks up the phone says so what happened what are your thoughts what are your plans you are thinking of joining says yeah i'm still contemplating but my question was do you have the bhagavatam <laughs> says no can i send you it will cost this much so this man was thinking if i refuse he may not join me i should keep the communication channel open so he purchased the bhagavatam after one week chaitanya charitamrita after whole set of books were sold 
then finally this devotee said we are not selling these books as a business when krishna tells the gopis na parayeham niravajya samyujam i can never repay what the gopis are serving me how the gopis are serving me so therefore when someone tries to spread krishna consciousness and shares krishna's message with the conditioned soul krishna becomes overwhelmed with gratitude and because of that feeling of gratitude krishna just wants to become the servant of that devotee and krishna says in the gita one who distributes this message is dearest to me and therefore the fifth principle is the suffering cannot affect the dutiful aho kashtam aho anyayam yad yuyam dharmanandanah jeevitam narhada klishtam vipra dharma chutashrayah bhishma dev says to the pandavas you went through so much of suffering but you could survive because you had three qualities you were loyal to achyuta krishna you were loyal to the vipra which is the vaishnavas and third you were loyal to dharma in all circumstances remain dutiful to all these three vipra dharma achyuta shrayah and when one is in such a situation then one will not be affected there was a terrorist attack many years ago in dhaka somebody came with guns and they entered the temple in bangladesh and there was one american devotee was sitting on the book stall outside the temple so this terrorist came and put the gun on his head and said you are a hindu and this american devotee was looking like what is this where is he come from where is he come from and why is he so agitated he says no i am gopi bhartur pad kamaleor das das anudas so when he said das das anudas so this guy also got bewildered he thought maybe it's a surname in bengali das so he got so confused he left so later this devotee wrote his realization the safest position in this world is das anudas <laughs> it saved my life so prabhupad was in amritsar and there was like a whole conference going on and everybody was speaking everything is one everything is one everything is one and prabhupad got up and started walking away and one devotee who was going to be who was with prabhupad said shila prabhupad you are the next speaker why are you walking away prabhupad said you know they are speaking again and again everything is one i am not interested to speak here but but who will represent is con prabhupad said you you speak Says, but prabhupada i am a new devotee i don't know how to speak prabhupada said at the level of discussion going on you know enough <laughs> and prabhupada left and then this devotee came up and said uh, i have a point to make everything is not one because rasgulla which is a sweet cannot be same as tool on the street <laughs> how can both be one and there was like a gasp of shock from the audience what kind of example is this <laughs> and some of the people came into the room and complained to prabhupad your american disciple he is telling us to eat stool on the street <laughs> which was another speculation so prabhupad looked at this devotee and said you spoke like that he says no prabhupad i just gave an example i was making a point because they were saying everything else when i said no everything is not one stool on the street cannot be same as rasgulla which is a sweet prabhupada said, okay okay you go now <laughs> so prabhupada told his disciple to go away and then he told the others who were complaining hey, you know my american disciples they make very graphic examples <laughs> you don't worry i'll take care of them so they left then prabhupada called his disciple back and said what was that stool on the street and rasgulla the sweet excellent example <laughs>
And Srila Prabhupada said that although you don't know too much, but whatever you know, if you repeat dutifully and practice dutifully, you will be more empowered than anyone else. So that was the spirit with which Srila Prabhupada spread the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. That yes, the material world is a place of suffering, will be a place of suffering. Maharaj Parikshit is faced with this suffering, but Maharaj Parikshit is expressing his gratitude. Vayam dhanya tama loke guru pikshatrabandhavaha Vayam pibama mohustatta punyam krishna kathamrtam Parikshit Maharaj at the end of three and a half days, he says, My dear Lord, I am the most fortunate. So Prabhupada says, there is fortunate, more fortunate and most fortunate. One who gets satsanga of devotees of Krishna, they are fortunate. One who gets to hear Krishna Katha in that satsanga is more fortunate. And one who gets to hear Krishna Katha repeatedly in that satsanga is most fortunate. In one program I was asking, who is fortunate? Satsanga then. Who is more fortunate? One who gets to hear. Then I asked, who is most fortunate? They said, one who gets prasad after the katha. <laughs> But one who gets to hear Krishna Katha repeatedly. So therefore Parikshit Maharaj is going through the misfortune of death in three days. But as against the misfortune of death, when he looks at the fortune of hearing Krishna Katha repeatedly, he says, I am the most fortunate. And therefore, Maharaj Parikshit is showing us the example of a great devotional response that yes, material world is designed to be suffering. Krishna is the cause behind that suffering. He declares its place as a place of suffering. Yes, suffering will manifest as a result of our karma and you know, suffering may be there but we need to perform our duties. But the silver lining is in the midst of all this suffering there is satsanga in the midst of that satsanga, there is shravana. And as a result of that shravana, we are able to transform our desires in such a way that whether there is prosperity or adversity, we can constantly meditate on how to serve Krishna and how to please Krishna and prepare for the ultimate suffering at the moment of death. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.